Did you know that in 1970, Volusia was the very first county in Florida to adopt a home rule charter? Hello and welcome to Volusia Magazine. I'm Amber Patterson. On today's edition, we'll take a look at the county's Home Rule Charter Review Commission. We'll also get a look at Volusia County's Beach Safety Division in this week's Volusia Here and Now. Then health reporter Stephanie Strong brings us a report from the Volusia County Health Department about food safety precautions. And finally, Community Information Director Dave Byron will be joined in the studio by his guest, President and CEO of Team Volusia, Keith Norton. Those segments, news and more coming right up on Volusia Magazine. I hope you stay tuned. This is an important year for Volusia County government because it's a year in which the county's voter approved home rule charter gets reviewed by a panel of citizen volunteers. Just in the way of background, Volusia County's charter was adopted by Volusia voters in 1970 and went into effect a year later. The charter creates the county manager form of Volusia's government with a seven member county council setting policy and a professional administrator, the county manager, responsible to run the operations of county government and carry out the policy directives established by the county council. It's noteworthy that Volusia was the first county in Florida to adopt a home rule charter following a revision to the Florida Constitution in 1968 that allowed counties to establish home rule through a voter approved charter. Charter counties have broad local powers as long as they're consistent with state law. Volusia's charter itself calls for a citizen review at least every 10 years. And any recommended amendments coming from the Charter Review Commission go directly to voters in the 2016 general election. The County Council at its meeting last week selected 15 citizens from 47 applications received. The list of citizens chosen by the County Council to serve on the Charter Review Commission can be viewed by going to the county's website, volusia.org. The county's website also is the source where citizens can get information and updates on the workings of the Charter Review Commission. With an eye to future parking needs, the Volusia County Council recently approved the purchase of the Surf and Sand Motel in Daytona Beach. The beachfront lot, which is just north of Glenview Boulevard, will be converted into an off-beach parking lot for residents and visitors. The purchase price was $2.7 million. It's the seventh land purchase the county has made in recent years to shore up beach parking options. The surf and sand property is unique because it can be connected to an expansion of Daytona Beach's famous boardwalk. Under a proposal from County Manager Jim Deneen, the boardwalk would be extended from University Boulevard to Silver Beach Avenue. As you know, there's been a decision to create a hotel zone for high-end hotels especially those hotels that want to put the investment in and they believe they need the uh, beach parking removed from behind the hotel to allow them to put the investment in to become what most people consider a five-star hotel. Uh, once that decision was made to move ahead with that concept, there was a zone created. That zone was from University to Silver Beach. In that zone uh, was this opportunity area for hotels to come forward with these proposals if they were willing to make a large enough investment. Then the council would consider as long as they made a trade-off of property to allow cars to be removed from behind the hotels. Well, in creating that zone, it created an opportunity to go further, which was to try and connect that zone some way that made it more valuable unto itself by being connected than to, to not be connected. That connection, we decided, would be best served by a boardwalk. Earlier this year, the County Council agreed to purchase the Eleanor Village Shopping Center in Ormond Beach for $1.8 million and the vacant oceanfront lot in Daytona Beach Shores for $2.95 million. Last year, the county purchased the Argosy Motel in Ormond-by-the-Sea and the Jasmine Motel in Daytona Beach Shores. It also bought a three-acre lot near Hiles Boulevard in New Smyrna Beach to add about 100 parking spots to an existing parking lot. Meanwhile, Volusia County is partnering with New Smyrna Beach on the development of a beachfront park that will provide 70 parking spaces, restrooms, and picnic pavilions. 
The county purchased the one-acre site at 901 South Atlantic Avenue in 2012 for $1.1 million. New Smyrna Beach will be responsible for the park's design, construction, maintenance, and operation. The county also partnered with Ormond Beach to buy land and build the popular Andy Romano Beachfront Park, which opened in 2013 with a splash pad, playground, picnic area, and pavilion. The county has more than 3,500 off-beach parking spaces from Ormond by the Sea through the Canaveral National Seashore. For more information, log on to volusia.org and select Beaches from the drop-down menu. Here's a chance to get an up-close and personal look at the inner workings of Volusia County's government. Applications are being accepted for the county's annual Citizens Academy. It's a hands-on awareness program designed to educate and inform citizens about how county government operates. It's a 12-week program which meets from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tuesdays and will begin August 18th. There is no charge for the program, but applicants are asked to commit to attending all 12 classes. Members will meet at various county facilities, including the Sheriff's Communications and Emergency Operations Center, the Tomoka Landfill, Volusia County Branch Jail, the Marine Science Center, the Ocean Center, and Daytona Beach International Airport. They also will tour county construction projects. Topics will include growth management, community services, public protection, property assessments, and budgets. And I would encourage anyone who's got an interest in the county, um, whether it just be because you pay taxes here or whether you want to get more involved, to be a part of the Citizens Academy because it, it was a great, um, wonderful event to be a part of and to learn from. And had a chance to learn where our tax dollars go, how well they're spent, and how diligently the county of Volusia works to enhance every dollar we have and use. The stewardship of that money and the stewardship of caring for their employees and the county we live in was a, a great learning tool. For more information and to apply, go online to the county's website, volusia.org, and click on Government and then Citizens Academy. Applications must be turned in to the Volusia County Manager's Office by July 24th. The Citizens Academy is limited to 25 participants. Applicants are selected through an interview process. Volusia County is one of the few beach safety organizations in the world where full-time staff are triple certified as Florida law enforcement officers, lifeguards, and EMTs. There are also just under 300 full and part-time lifeguards. Reporter Kendra Lee shows us a day in the life of beach safety in this week's Volusia Here and Now. Lifeguards have many duties, one of the most important being watching the water. They're constantly scanning back and forth to make sure no one is in distress. The lifeguards are trained to uh, detect rip currents. Um, it's, it's a very hard thing to do, um, but them being up a little bit higher on their lifeguard towers, it's easier for them to see. So if they see a rip current, they immediately keep bathers out of it um, by whistling them, using their flags, trying to get them out of it just to prevent any kind of rescue. If they do get caught in it, our lifeguards are very well trained to get in the water, get to them quickly, and get them out safely. Officers and EMTs monitor the beach on ATVs or in patrol vehicles, watching the water as they drive by and looking for anyone in distress. They may also look at beachgoers on the sand to see if anyone may be experiencing heat exhaustion or other illnesses. During peak beach times, as many as 60 to 80 lifeguard towers may be manned each day. We have two different towers. It's our base tower here, and we also have our regular lifeguard towers, which are made out of wood. So the general difference between them is your base tower that we're walking up right now, you're going to have a better perspective of the beach because we are, as you can see, we're sitting higher up. So you have a better perspective of the beach. You can see farther. As you can see, there's people down there. Whereas down with a uh, wooden tower, you're closer to water's edge. 
So your perspective with that is that you're closer to the water so you can respond to a rescue better, but up here you can get a better view over the waves. Like if there was a high swell, we could see farther and over them in case someone was actually in danger. If you're going to be visiting the beach this season, be sure to be aware of the weather conditions and the water conditions when you come. The signs at the beach are posted in various areas to allow you to know the risk and the weather conditions when you visit. You may also ask a lifeguard when you show up to the beach if you're not sure of where a sign is located. Now we also have beach condition flags that um, all the stations and all the control towers have. Um, several different colors. Yellow is for moderate, that's our most used one. Red we use on a day where the swell size has picked up, the rip currents have um, picked up, and we want people to use a little bit more caution. We also utilize purple, that is for um, dangerous animals or uh, a high influx of animals such as jellyfish in the water that we want people to be aware of and know that there is a possibility of uh, getting stung while they're in the water and to just be mindful of that. Lifeguards also help reunite hundreds of lost children with their families. Lifeguards offer rescue bracelets, which stand for reuniting everyone safely and quickly. Parents are asked to write their child's name and their cell phone number on the bracelet for quick identification and notification. With all of these great responsibilities, lifeguards still have time to answer questions from beachgoers to ensure future safety. Ask them anything from the tides, the weather, any kind of safety information. Um, lifeguards can provide all kinds of tips for them as far as sunscreen and where to park and how to uh, keep an eye on their kids and the, most importantly, the condition of the water. Lifeguards are on the beach to help prevent beachgoers from getting into dangerous situations, but they can also be lifesavers. For Volusia Here and Now, I'm Kendra Lee. To learn more about Volusia County's Beach Safety Division, you can visit volusia.org slash beach. And be sure to download the Volusia County Beach Navigator app to have the latest beach information and conditions at your fingertips. Keep it clean, keep it cold, keep it covered. Those are just some of the tips from the Florida Department of Health when it comes to your food. Food safety is a major concern, and Health Department Public Information Officer Stephanie Strong takes a closer look at how you can keep your food safe and avoid illness. Simple steps like proper hand washing can protect your family and friends. The best way to prevent illness is to practice safe food preparation and food handling. We're having parties, we're preparing food, and food that's improperly handled or stored at an incorrect temperature can have bacteria introduced in it and multiply in it, and we don't want to make ourselves or family or friends sick. For your summer festivities, the Florida Department of Health in Volusia County reminds you to consider these careful tips to avoid foodborne illness. One of the leading causes of foodborne illness is improper hand washing. So we recommend washing your hands with soap and water for a minimum of 20 seconds. And that will remove bacteria from your hands that we get from using the bathroom or handling different types of food. So between handling meat and handling vegetables, you'd want to wash your hands anytime you go to the bathroom uh, or anytime you've been smoking is another incidence. If you take the garbage out, anytime you, your hands could have gotten bacteria, which you may not be able to see, you want to do a thorough hand washing. Make sure your cooking area is clean. Wash your hands, wash cutting boards, utensils, and countertops. Keep raw meat, poultry, and seafood separate from ready-to-eat foods. Keep your refrigerator below 40 degrees and refrigerate perishable items. If perishable food items have been left out of the refrigerator for longer than two hours, discard them. In weather above 90 degrees, food should not be left out for more than one hour. Be especially careful preparing food for children, pregnant women, those in poor health and older adults, and report suspected illness from food to your local county health department. Most summer holiday gatherings take place outside, and Florida's heat poses special challenges for food safety. 
If your plans include grilling outside, keep these important tips in mind. When transporting food to another location, pack food directly from the refrigerator into the cooler immediately before leaving home. Each year, one in six Americans get sick from preventable illnesses related to food poisoning. For more information on various foodborne illnesses and more ways to keep you safe, please visit the Center for Disease Control and Prevention's food safety page at www.cdc.gov forward slash food safety forward slash. For Volusia Magazine, I'm Stephanie Strong, Public Information Officer for the Florida Department of Health in Volusia County. As always, if you have any questions about this or any other health-related issues, you can log on to volusiahealth.com. Keith Norton is Team Volusia's President and CEO, and he'll be in the studio with Community Information Director Dave Byron for an in-depth interview. Thanks, Amber, and hi, everyone. You know, economic development in Volusia County is a team sport, and the new company recruitment effort is led by the Team Volusia Economic Development Corporation. Keith Norton is Team Volusia's president and CEO, and he's on the road a lot these days pitching Volusia County to companies that might be looking to expand or relocate to our area. We haven't talked with Keith for a while, so we'll catch up with what's been going on with Team Volusia. Our guest in the studio, Keith Norton. Keith, how are you doing? Good morning, Dave. It's nice to have you with us. How you been? Great. So I know that uh, you have been on the road a lot, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But let's talk about economic development in general. Again, for those folks that may not understand the economic development landscape and so forth, how do you define economic development? It's really the creation of jobs for our citizens here in Volusia County and capital investment by companies, whether they expand or relocate. So, Keith, if I'm a resident in Volusia County, why, why should I care about economic development? In other words, how does that impact uh, the folks that live here? Well, you know, if we're successful, the tax base grows, and then that helps funds the, fund the services of the county, plus there are jobs for our citizens. Right. So uh, people that might be citizens that might be in tourism uh, roles or retail roles may have a chance for a job with, uh, with uh, full benefits. Sure. As you, as you go about in, in your business of trying to recruit companies to come to Volusia County, are there certain types of co uh, companies or certain types of jobs that you're looking at? Yes, uh, normally higher paid jobs in high growth uh, industry sectors. Right. And those sectors are manufacturing, distribution, office, as well as the primary one for the county is aviation and aerospace. For those folks uh, that are not familiar with Team Volusia Economic Development, uh, describe your organization. It's a public-private entity. It was founded five years ago, and it uh, has government support through the county and uh, 12 of our 16 cities, and then we also have about 80 private sector investors. So it's really a, a true public-private uh, partnership. It is, and it's great. It's a leveraging of dollar, dollar for dollar. Government puts in about 50 percent, and private sector puts in 50 percent. Government pays for our operations, and private sector pays for all of our outreach and marketing. I know we've been uh, generally saying that, uh, you know, no one entity, no one uh, person uh, can carry the whole uh, ball of wax when it comes to economic development. There's actually a lot of partners. Um, you know, you've got the, your, your organization, you also have the county, mm -hmm. uh, and you also have uh, some corporate support through what's called the CEO Alliance. Uh, tell us about that group. Uh, yes, the CEO Business Alliance is funded by the seven or eight corporate icons here in Volusia County. It's a pure private group, and they can do things that a government or a public-private partnership can't do. Because mm -hmm. there are certain, I guess there are certain constraints on the expenditure of public funds, I guess. Exactly. So uh, other partners in the ecosystem we've described as our colleges and universities, our, our workforce board. Uh, Chambers of Commerce. Chambers, yeah. And you work, uh, I mean, collaboratively with all of those partners. Exactly. And a true location, a successful location, would bring all those partners to the table to help sell Volusia County. In your opinion, how, uh, in, in how are things going in the economic development arena in Volusia County? Very well, and we're all working together collaboratively. I've never seen a, 
a more collaborative type of economic development in any uh, region that I've worked in. What's the county's role in economic development as you see it? Right, the county role is, of course, working with their existing businesses, our existing businesses, uh, both in an expansion mode and in retaining them, but also they uh, can offer local matches to state uh, incentives. Yeah, and, and as I understand it, Keith, uh, oftentimes when there are public uh, dollars involved in the form of an incentive, those uh, grants have to be sponsored, I guess, by a government agency. That's correct. So uh, you've been on the road a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us where you've been and uh, what you've been doing these days. Well, most recently, uh, we were asked by Enterprise Florida to uh, exhibit in the Florida Pavilion at the uh, Paris Air Show, which is actually about an hour outside of Paris at Le Bourget. But it, we had the greatest number of companies of any U.S. state, and it was a very productive show. It is the world's largest aviation and aerospace uh, show. It, it goes every other year right. to London, and then it comes back to Paris. My understanding is, uh, from talking with you previously, uh, Governor Scott was there, and of course, Embry Riddle had a very uh, large presence. Embry Riddle had a large presence. Uh, Governor and Mrs. Scott were there, uh, and a lot of the senior uh, board leadership of our state organization, Enterprise Florida. So uh, you went to the show uh, on the way back. Uh, how do you feel like you did? I mean, any prospects? Uh, very well. In fact, uh, I met with uh, 12 companies uh, on pre-scheduled appointments, but another five, and then followed up with companies we had seen last year at the Farnborough Air Show. We've already, in fact, had a visit. Really? Uh, yes, last week. A Brazilian company, uh, uh, an engineering firm, uh, large presence in Brazil, uh, the president and owner decided to come to Volusia County to take a look after our appointment. When you're out on the road, uh, Keith, and you're, you're talking about Volusia County, what are the sales points that you, you focus on? I mean, what, what are the strengths for a company that may be looking at Volusia County? Well, it's the location, it's the workforce, it's the availability of uh, sites or offices that match their need. Uh, it's the quality of life in our educational institutions. You know, one of the things that comes up a lot, uh, particularly as we approach uh, government budget season, um, uh, is the tax rate in Volusia County. Um, you know, you're out in, 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 in competing with other areas and so forth. How do we compete in terms of taxes? Well, actually, as, um, you, know, as you know, we market to companies outside of Florida. Right. And usually outside of Volusia County always. But uh, we look at the Florida taxes. So the Tax Watch is an annual report that comes out and ranks all 50 states. Right. And Florida ranks number five, lowest out of 50 states. So we have no personal income tax. Right. We have uh, affordable corporate uh, taxes, uh, personal property, business tax, and sales tax. So it's a great uh, leverage for us when we go to the higher cost areas around the country. So Keith, uh, you know, you've been here for about three years now and obviously uh, you've got uh, public and private investment dollars in your organization. Uh, generally speaking, uh, what's the scorecard? I mean, how, how are you doing, you think, in terms of what's the success ratio? Oh, we're doing great. And in fact, uh, we uh, achieved and exceeded our three-year goals that ended uh, in 2014 and we very much expect to hit or exceed our 2015 goal. Keith, uh, you know, the largest industry in Volusia County is tourism, mm -hmm. and uh, as it is in the state of Florida. Uh, it seems to me, I've been here almost 40 years, it seems to me that there's more buzz and more positive activity uh, around the tourism industry uh, than I, I've seen. I mean, what, what's your take on that? Uh, it is, and it's across the state. Right. Uh, we're very successful. Uh, and uh, we've got some great news coming up with some, you know, rebranding of hotels right. and refurbishment of hotels and new hotels. But more importantly, Florida uh, has ranked uh, really number one in tourism and will probably exceed 100 million tourists this year. 
uh, for Florida, 60 million alone for Central Florida. We have the incubator uh, at uh, Daytona Beach International Airport operated by uh, the University of Central Florida. My understanding is, is that incubator is uh, rapidly gaining a reputation as being a model. It's hugely successful. And, and what's, you know, how does that play into the overall uh, landscape, Keith? Well, you know, we want to nurture our companies and uh, a lot of the companies that are at the incubator are, are good companies that can stay here and we hope that they'll stay here in Volusia County. They've won awards uh, and so we're very excited to have that to also sell to our companies and emerging technology companies. We mentioned uh, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, uh, you know, the world's premier aviation related uh, college in, in the whole world. Uh, how, how important are they to the overall effort here and what do you see their potential as? Well, it's huge for aviation and aerospace. Right. They have a, uh, a wonderful international reputation. Uh, the numbers of people at our aerospace companies across the country and the world. They have graduates at Boeing, Embraer. Uh, it's a great draw for us as we try to recruit companies. And they're, uh, you know, growing a research park of their own, are they not? They are, and I'm excited about uh, the possibilities of that. It adjoins the Daytona Beach International Airport. Right. So there's a lot of uh, synergies between the acreage that's available at Daytona Beach International Airport and the research park. We mentioned uh, aerospace earlier in the interview. Um, you know, what do you think about aerospace as it relates to Volusia's uh, role in that? And, how, you know, if you had to look out three, four, five years, where do you think we're headed here with aerospace? Uh, we've got a great future. If you look at a map, we have 28 of the world's largest and most impressive aerospace companies within an hour drive. Uh, that puts us on the map. We've got Embry-Riddle here uh, with a, a wonderful reputation internationally. And we have the workers that are here mm -hmm. that in Volusia County that actually travel to other counties in this, in this sector. So we've got a great... Uh, great future. It seems like, uh, Keith, more and more, you know, the space industry is moving toward private sector, private companies getting into, you know, the space business. And again, we ought to be well positioned to that, I would think. We are. Just the proximity of Kennedy. And uh, um, so we've got, you know, you, there are second tier suppliers for that. There are manufacturers for right. that. And then we have the 400 manufacturers here in Volusia County that can actually support those uh, those technologies. Well, Keith, uh, for people out there that uh, perhaps want more information about your organization, maybe they'd like to have you come by and uh, speak at their civic organization and so forth, how do people get more information about Team Volusia? Well, our website is www.teamvoluciaedc.com and our phone number is 386-265-6332 and I'm out and about uh, throughout the county speaking, so I'd love to participate if there's a need. Well, Keith, I want to thank you for sharing the information with us. Uh, we haven't talked with you for a while. It does seem like things are really going pretty well in Volusia County these days. They are. Our thank guest you. today, Keith Norton. Uh, he's the president and CEO of Team Volusia Economic Development. And with that, we'll go back to you, Amber. Thanks, Dave. And thank you for watching Volusia Magazine. If you have any questions about the show, you can always feel free to give us a call at any of the numbers you see listed here, or you can simply log on to volusia.org and click on the News tab at the top of the screen to find us. Incidentally, you can find the County Council's meeting calendar there too. In fact, you can use volusia.org to find out about meeting dates, workshops, topics of interest, activities, and how you can become involved. And we hope you won't forget to listen to Volusia Today. That's Volusia County Government's weekly public radio broadcast. Volusia Today airs every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sunday mornings on the local radio stations you see on your screen. For Volusia Magazine, I'm Amber Patterson, and I hope you have a wonderful evening.